Hello and welcome to Keys and Breakdowns. This is really about managing keyframes and how to go about adding breakdown poses in between your keyframes as well. So first of all, you'd think that when you do pose to pose animation, you always just go from A to B, from one pose to another. Well, it turns out that really what you want to do is you want to go from A to X to B. And this is advocated a lot by uh, master animator Richard Williams in his books and so on. Um, the importance of the so-called breakdown pose in between the keyframes that um, really describes how the motion happens. And I'll give you an example. So these are two poses and uh, this could be like a, like a head that moves uh, from the left to the right of the screen. And normally you'd think that the middle position should be here, right in the middle, um, and it moves across the screen like that. But it turns out uh, that it's much better to put it here, in a completely third location. And this ensures that the motion is much more natural and interesting and varied to look at as well. But of course, you shouldn't just insert it into sort of any random location because the breakdown really describes how the motion goes from A to B. And um, that's why you should consider the emotions of your characters and what happens in the scene as well. I'll give you some examples of how to effectively insert some breakdown poses. Here we have a character looking from left to right, just simply from left to right. And, uh, you know, that's all. But it's very, very... Uh, uninteresting and robotic and it doesn't feel very natural at all. So as soon as we insert a breakdown pose like this, you'll see that it's just far more natural and uh, it really makes the character come alive as he looks around. I've, I've only inserted one keyframe pose in the middle so it could be much better still, but already you get the idea. Here with the squirrel, he's looking from left to right as well. I'm just uh, going to show you a more toony example of the same thing. Right, so he's sort of getting a shock or something. Uh, and you can see when we insert the breakdown, it really comes alive. And now I'm going to switch over to Blender and give you a practical example of how to insert a breakdown pose in between uh, two keyframes. So here we have our character. And I've already set up two poses. He goes from this sort of angry look behind him to a shock. He might be uh, seeing some... Uh, you know, scary creature, and it just and you can see when I'm playing it back, going from one frame directly to the other, uh, there's just really no life in it. So I'll enable the armatures, and uh, I'll go to the uh, right in the middle between the two original poses, and I'm, I'm going to start to alter this keyframe. Right, so I've turned on a linear interpolation just so I can get. Uh, the middle position as a starting point, and then I start to really alter that. So here I'm closing the eyes and changing the uh, expression a little bit to be varied um, from the other ones. As he changes expression, um, he'll go through this facial expression in the middle. And I'm actually distorting the face a little bit, you know, scaling it just to make uh, the, the emotion feel more sort of fluid and, and you know, cartoony as well. also bringing the head down and you'll notice that with most people if, if they go from if they look around they usually look slightly down as they move from left to right um, depending on on you know exactly what they're doing of course um, and I'm also going to bring the body a little bit down just to vary it from the other shapes and also you know to make sure that the emotion just you know he he, he sort of has comes down and then he, he comes up in this sort of shock that he has at the end it will make it seem uh, you know more of a shock uh, if he goes down you see already 
looks far better. But we've only inserted one pose and everything moves sort of relatively uh, the same amount of time. And so we can improve uh, the hand to have, uh, sorry, the arm to have some more uh, overlapping action if we make the hand sort of drag behind the rest of the arm here. Give it a nicer, uh, nicer motion. Already far better. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the uh, original <clears throat> pose that we had at the end. And then I'm just going to alter that and make that into a sort of extreme shock pose uh, before he relaxes to our final uh, pose at the end. I'm going to put it closer to the middle uh, breakdown pose because uh, then we'll have a very sort of fast action. He'll turn around and then quickly jump up into the air and it will give it a more, much more sudden uh, sort of shock-like uh, effect. I'm also going to stretch his head like this so that you know it really um, it becomes stretchy and cartoon-like. Open the eyes completely fully. Again, I'm going to make the uh, hand sort of follow the rest of the arm just to add a little bit of overlapping action and, you know, also make sure that there's, uh, you know, plenty of, of life in the movement. Already, it's just far better. There's so much uh, life. And we've only got, you know, as you can see, we've only got four keyframes. Um, so, you know, you could go on, you know, just adjusting these things. You can see already with you know two keyframes in the middle, I'm just adjusting the timing here a little bit. Um, and now he goes almost uh, with you know directly from the breakdown pose up to this shock pose. Um, but because of the anticipation where he goes down, you know that's sort of okay. You don't it, it makes it legitimate to go you know from one pose to a completely different pose uh, with no frames in between. And here I'm just you know, adding a little smoothing at the end um, to make sure it really sort of settles into that pose at the end after the he goes up in the air. Just adjusting some of the frames in between the first ones. Just as he goes down and he sort of starts to see, uh, you know, what it is that's behind him. All right, and there we are. And uh, that's the final shot. And you can see in a few easy steps, you know, we've taken a really bland and boring animation. This is the original and made it into something that's just far, far better using, uh, you know, just a few breakdown poses. And that's all. That should give you a good idea of how to use breakdown poses effectively to spice up your animations. Thanks.